Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews, my latest film for you guys here now, and I know it's been a while since I reviewed an actual movie, and this film is called We Need to Do Something, and this is based on a novella that I have not read, and I'm probably thinking to myself, who thought this was an interesting novel to adapt? And this happens to be written by someone who's probably thinking to themselves, hooray, I finally got my work made into a future film. And it's directed by someone who's probably thinking to themselves also, hooray, someone's actually going to be watching and reviewing and how they feel about this film while going to the local papers, if anyone actually reads papers anymore or actually bothers to read the internet these days. And so basically, here's the deal. This was filmed during the height of the pandemic last year. And so this happens to be an allegory for the pandemic. Sure, it could work. I think it works better more as a domestic drama than anything else. And even then, it's not all that special. And if it's also, there are some other elements introduced to this film later on that I don't think really all that work very well. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. And this tells the story of Vanessa, played by a girl who I think was apparently on the show Supernatural for a couple of episodes here and there. And she's just getting home. There's a storm brewing. They have to make their way to the bathroom of all places. Now, I don't know if the bathroom is the best place, but alas, they chose a bathroom here. And what do you know? The storm passes, but the, obviously a big oak tree falls right in front of the door, so therefore they can't get out. Now, now obviously, it's a horror in of itself to be stuck with your parents and your younger brother. But alas, <laughs> hey, look... If anyone to spend the time with is probably your family, considering that, hey, look, that was what I did for the majority of the pandemic last year was stay at home with my family. So the father here is a male management type, and clearly it's alluded to that he quite possibly has a drinking problem because at least at one point, mom is recounting what happened surrounding the birth of her brother Bobby, and Bobby is like, okay, where was dad? And Vanessa sort of snidely says, oh yeah, you might have been getting drunk in a bowling alley. And obviously multiple times are trying to get out of this you know, bathroom. Obviously it's very thick walls and obviously the oak tree is very thick and there's only a little bit of room to get out anyway. And so you can't, so you're stuck there. Multiple days pass, or at least I come to believe that it's multiple days and obviously they're confined there. They have to share the bathroom or they have to get a shower and all that's fine. I'm not going to complain. But then all of this is superseded with some flashbacks off that all of a sudden make its way into the next sort of last act of this film. And I'm just sort of like, well, this is an odd way to go. But hey, look, that what the novella went for, it might as well be good enough for the film. Be that Vanessa had a budding relationship with Amy. Now, Vanessa is mildly goth, I can say that. But Amy is much more goth. Now, obviously, Amy was a risk cutter, and clearly at one point she says, I believed I was dead and then came back, but clearly something is in me, which obviously, hey, look, risk cutters and are deeply disturbed people, although at the same time they have deep trauma to go along with that. And obviously they strike up a friendship, then a romance between the two, and obviously Amy has trouble with this one particular boy who, what do you know, they decide basically to put a curse or a hex on him because that's what you do when you have a boy that's clearly troubling you. And then, of course, in the last act, all that stuff sort of comes to the limelight and I'm just sort of like, okay, sure. But also at the same time, a snake gets into the bathroom, a rattlesnake, and obviously it bites someone. I don't, now, I don't know how much long it takes for poison to seep through someone's being or if how deadly or poisonous or else things venom is, but things start to happen as well. Apparently a dog that's been dead for a while appears at the door, or they never show that. Obviously, at least at one point, Amy digs up the dog with the remains, and that's sort of odd and creepy. Oh yes, obviously the cell phones are largely dead, or at least that Vanessa's phone is dropped outside. And at least at one point, someone else's phone 
does the never gonna give you up thing by Rick Rolled and well, there you go and then this film just sort of has that ending which is like okay that's the ending that you want to go with very well then cue credits cutscene and let's go to the ending bay so in the end folks what I'm gonna say about we need to do something I amazingly enough am gonna give this a subsequent weekend ranking because you can easily watch this just not necessarily right now so folks, we need to do something. Have you seen this? What do you think? Please put everything in the comment box below here, folks. As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe. Convert yourself to the knowledge. I'll see you next time, folks. Yes, hooray.